Hi, and welcome to Ask GMBN Tech, the weekly Q&A session. Anything tech related with mountain bikes, old, new, you name it, get involved in the comments, use the hashtag Ask GMBN Tech if you want to ask something. And if it's a great question and we haven't answered it before, we'll get involved on a future show. Uh, you might be wondering why I'm in the dirt shed. Well, it's because uh, the guys on GCN are using the tech set at the moment. A bit annoying, but um, hey, you've got to let the roadists have something every now and then. Uh, before we get started, if you haven't already subscribed to GMBN Tech, please do. Uh, there's a thing you can click on just floating around somewhere by my finger. And yeah, right, let's get involved. First question, it was from Steve S. I've recently been challenging myself to a hill climb on my rock hopper, but near the top where it gets steeper, I'm running out of cadence. Gearing seems okay, running a 1x12 with a 30 chainring and a 52 on the cassette. So I started to wonder if shorter cranks might help. Uh, they would give slightly less leverage, but a shorter, smaller pedal path, which might help being able to keep up with cadence. What are your thoughts? Um, honestly, 30 with a 52, if you can't turn that round, you, you may as well be walking. You're going that slow on something that steep. Um, this is not about you as a fitness or anything. I'm just meaning you're, you're going that slowly. So I don't think you could go much lower on many bikes that are running a one by 12, certainly not modern bikes, because a 32, I don't think you could get a smaller. You might be able to get a 28 on there, but I think that would be absolute limit. Now the cranks might make a marginal gain. Um, I'm not convinced they'll make the difference between being able to get up that last bit or not. They might help slightly. I'd actually probably say that fitness and technique are the two things that will probably help you more. Um, I'm not trying to suggest you're not fit, but just some ideas here anyway. Um, for technique, try zigzagging. If the trail's wide enough and allows it, see if you can get across to a far right or a far left and cut back. Uh, you can lessen the gradient very slightly, even if it's just for that little bit. Or perhaps if you can lower your cadence, maybe seven eighths of it and you're saving that last little bit, in that seven, eight section, lower your cadence and just save a bit of energy for a burst and really power to try and get through that. And the other one you could do would be to adjust the position on your bike, of course. Now there's a few things you can do with this. Um, ideally, you wanna get your hips as forward as possible if you're trying to focus on climbing up steep stuff. Uh, the further backwards you are in the bike, two things are gonna happen. Your weight's gonna be over the fulcrum of the bike, which will be your rear wheel axle when you're climbing steep. It's gonna be making things hard. You're gonna be leaning forward. You're gonna be using your arms more than you should be. So get that saddle as far forwards as possible. Tip the nose down very slightly. We're talking about five, 10 degrees, nothing too much. And try and perch on the end of that saddle. The more forwards you can get, you'll actually get more leverage down on those cranks at the angle. Um, it's difficult. I do think there's a video though, jokes aside, no offense, Rich, I think there is something we could do over on GMBN about A, not only developing that sort of low end grunt power, that stuff that you really need for stuff like this, but also in the techniques to get up stuff like this. I think it's um, a valid video. I'm gonna suggest it to those guys and see if it can be a thing. Um, but yeah, good luck. Next up from Almost Friends. I've got a Canyon Spectral 2020 with 160, 150 mil travel. So that's 160 on the front because it's a 150 bike. I just moved into my new area and it's more flat terrain riding. Would changing my fork travel to 150 change the geometry in a noticeable way to make the bike more suitable for more XCO or trail kind of riding? Um, well, I used to have virtually that same bike, but mine was 150, 150 setup and I used it for everything. And in fact, I used it from local trail rides, which is virtually cross country around here, all the way through to riding downhill tracks. I did that Magura brake video on the SRAM downhill test track in, in Malaga, and I never felt once that I needed the 160. So it won't affect anything if you want to take it down. And if anything, it balances out a little bit better. I would say the only thing that you could do to improve your bike for sort of trail riding versus the more fun, playful stuff, one, you want to sort of reduce the sag on the bike slightly. So if you're running 30%, maybe try 25. Get the bike to just sit a little higher. It'll feel a little bit more responsive when you're pedaling, won't sort of bog in too much. And potentially look at lowering your bar position. So if you've got any spaces under your stem, let's say you've got three spaces, try and remove a space or two. Only a small amount, you don't want to go too far because if you upset the balance on the bike, if you, if you lower the stem or lengthen the stem too much, you're going to find it hard to get backwards on the bike and lift the front end. However, you will notice the difference and it will also give you a little bit more traction on the front there. So just think like marginal things you could do. Um, if you don't have the luxury of lowering the stem on the bike, it's something you could consider uh, would be a lower rise bar. So that's uh, obviously be buying a new bar or perhaps a bit of an old one, but something else to consider. But that's an awesome bike, it's really light. And actually, at the end of the day, you don't need to change anything to make it work for everything, but 150, 150 works so well on that bike. 
Uh, next up, Doddy, you mentioned wanting to have a Klein hanging in the shop 10 months ago on the Dream Bike episode. I've got a late 90s Klein Adept Pro with a color changing paint. I love this already, I can see where it's going. Uh, that just sits on my wall. I'd send it to you if you'd actually hang it in the shop. Wow. Um, well, thank you in advance. Super generous offer. I'm just, just moving things around so I can look at the picture. It's a beautiful old bike. Um, I'd love to see it in, in slightly better light to see that paintwork, just to see that, because that's a color change paintwork on there. Wow. Um, but if I'm honest, there's no way I have room for it or we have room for it in the, the tech set. It's very limited on space. Um, oh man, it's a beautiful bike. I'd, I'd consider a frame, feels a bit wasteful. Um, I feel like your bike should be snapped up by another Klein fan. Um, if there's any Klein fans watching, um, get involved in the comments if you're interested in this. It's an Adept Pro, beautiful bike, single speed, shock run under top tube there. Um, lovely bike, thank you for the offer, it's really appreciated. If you had a much bigger place, I'd bite your arm off for that. Um, next up from Cursed Sky. Hi Anna and Doddy, quick question here. Can I use Muckoff Silicon Shine on Lefty Osho? Since it's an upside down fork, will it harm it or be okay? Okay, so just trying to understand what you want that for. I'm assuming when you're talking about silicon shine spray, because they do say on it it's good for using on suspension forks, that you want to put it on the stanchion of the fork. And if so, yeah, it'll work absolutely fine. You've got to bear in mind a few things here though. So firstly, when you're using any sort of silicon shine or any sort of polish spray near a bike, do not get it anywhere near the brakes because they will, just, especially with this stuff, they'll just never work properly again. You'll need new pads and probably new rotors as well. Spray it on a microfiber cloth, a clean one. Don't get anything dirty near the fork stanchions and then and then rub it onto those stanchions basically so you get a nice slippery surface compress the fork a few times and you might find some dirt comes out of the seals give it another white brand to clean you're good to go but the bigger thing that you need to be careful of with yours is because the stanchions inverted on that so it's actually right by the braking surface of the disc rotor so you've got to be super careful so i would take the front wheel out if you're going to do it on your bike and make sure none of it can none of the spray can get near that rotor and the same with the brake caliper but other than that yeah happy days and it will make your fork feel nice too and last up this week oh actually i lie there's a few more questions uh, this next one hi i recently bought a new canyon lux to replace my trek pro caliber uh, the Pro Calibre, by the way, in case you're not familiar, is Trek's XC Hardtail, beautiful bike. Due to the steeper seat angle, or the seat tube angle, I installed a seat post with a 20 mil setback to be able to copy my old settings. Is this a logical thing to do or does modern geometry alter another position on the bike? Um, okay, so you haven't listed the year model, so I had a quick look on the website. So 2016 Pro Calibre had between a 72 and a 73 degree seat angle, depending on the size. 2022, uh, 72 to 74. So it's really close actually to the Lux. Lux is 74 degrees and on some models, uh, some models it's 75 degrees, depending on the, the front fork travel you have on the bike. My old one was 74 degrees. Now, and that's pretty much standard for most cross country bikes these days. Now, I'm not convinced you needed to go as far as putting a step back post on there. The whole point of having a steeper seat angle on a bike is to improve your climbing position and allow for a longer front end. So you might just put yourself overly stretched out and put too much weight bias to the rear of the bike. Um, yeah, I don't think you need to do that. So I would consider moving it back forwards again or putting the original post on there moving it back slightly. You've got to consider once you've got that on and you've got your plumb line down from your knee through the pedal, then you've got to look at the tip of saddle through to the cockpit of the bars there. Uh, I've got a few videos that we can share with you down there all about sort of your cockpit and your saddle position. Got one on mastering saddle position and it should give you some giveaways there. But really, I don't think you need to do a step back um, on a modern bike. You should be running the modern bike as it is. And that bike is a fantastic bike. Uh, it was my last two cross country bikes. In fact, I loved it. Really good. And the last question, the real one this week, is all about Sam Pilgrim's new Spectral. So of course, Sam Pilgrim has moved sponsor from High Bike to another German company, to Canyon, which we all ride here at GMBN and GMBN Tech. He says, on Pilg's Spectral setup, how do you practically change gear when the shifter is down below the bottle cage area and your hands are not? Road bikes used to have the shifters at the top end of the down tube. Get from the bars today was much less due to rider position and drops. The pills, could you not just use the SRAM access type shifter? Okay, well, firstly, the answer is you don't, right? So that particular bike that Sam has set up is 
particularly for doing jumping and sort of slope style orientated free ride mountain bike tricks. So he's got the front brake hose routed through the top cap there so he can do bar spins. And by removing the shifter off the bars, you've only got the two brake hoses then. So you can have a nice long brake hose uh, for the rear so it can be spun around the head tube a few times. And then obviously the gear one, if you were to have that there, you're gonna pull it out at some point. So what he's done, he's had the shifter, which is a road shifter mounted on little mounts uh, just above the, or sorry, just on the bottle cage mounts below the shock there. And his idea, I guess, will be to select the appropriate gear for the slope style course or whatever it is he's riding and treat the bike like a single speed at that point. It's not designed for him to be able to shift easily whilst riding. But yeah, in theory, you could use a SRAM Access style shifter and, and do it wireless. That would totally work. Although I might imagine with the way that he rides and the constant bar spins and whips, it'd be a very easy thing to knock into having a shift like that. So removing it from the bar completely is probably what he wants. Uh, and I'm also gonna take a guess that that's not his only spectral. He's probably got one set up a bit more uh, for pedaling, you know, with gears and dropper post remote and stuff in the relevant place there. Uh, but there we go. Um, loads of great questions there actually, and that's a good one from Pilgrim. I'd like to actually have a closer look at his bike. Um, might drop him a line, see if he'll show us or maybe come on a GMBN video or something. We shall see. If you've got any suggestions for further GMBN tech videos or any tech related questions, please get involved in the comments down there and we'll see you in next week's video. Take care.